I go with Dwayne Wade. He's got rings. He's got championships. That's what it's... That's a mean. Okay, look. Time, time, I mean, time. He got one. He got one with Shaq. Yeah. Bro. Hold on a second. <laughs> let's talk about GM. Hold, let's, let's see if this is. <laughs> Please. Dwayne Wade, one of the greatest shooting guards of all time. He's a 12 time All Star, three time champion, the 2006 Finals MVP, the 2009 Scoring Champion, and one of the greatest defenders at his position. As of this video, he's second all-time in total blocks for a guard, only trailing Michael Jordan. But by the end of his career, he'll most likely pass him and be first. But despite all this, he gets disrespected a lot, and I notice it happens from not only the fans, but also from former players. It's kinda weird actually. In my opinion, he's the third greatest shooting guard of all time, and it's not even debatable. It is if you consider Jerry West a shooting guard, but I think he played point guard more with guys like Hot Rod Hundley and Gail Goodrich at the two. Anyway, how's it going fellas? My name's Andy, and there's a lot of negative opinions about D. Wade. I'll try to address all of it, and why I believe those negative opinions about D. Wade should change. First, we gotta start with the 2006 Finals. I'm sure everyone knows by now, it was one of the most controversial series in NBA history. Tim Donaghy was at the center of a bunch of betting scandals in the mid-2000s and he stated that The NBA manipulated the 06 finals to make sure it was extended and Dallas could never recover from it. He also mentioned that Ed Rush was the supervisor of officials for that series and he hated Mark Cuban's guts. He absolutely hated Mark Cuban. All signs point to the series as being rigged, and I will admit, the refs definitely favored Miami in some games, especially the one where D. Wade shot more free throws than the entire Mavs team. With that being said though, it happens frequently in other finals too, where it seems like some shady stuff might be going on because a sweep is about to happen and the refs start favoring the losing team, trying to extend the series. It's not only in 06, it happened in the past couple years too, like in 2017, Game 4, where it seemed like the Cavs got all the calls. Another thing I want to say is that nobody averages 35 points per game just because of the refs. D. Wade was a monster in that series. He was getting to the rim at will and nobody could stop him at all. Now, remember, this Mavs team was amazing offensively, but defensively they've had trouble with athletic guards all year. This was the same season that Kobe Bryant outscored the entire Mavs team 62-61 by himself by the end of the third quarter. And honestly, if you go back and rewatch that series, Wade drew a lot of legit fouls. He was getting to his spots without any pressure because the Mavs perimeter defense was terrible. Yes, he did get some help from the refs, but that was still an all-time great performance and he was only 24 years old. Next, let's talk about another argument people use against Wade. And that's the whole, well, he won his championships with Shaq and LeBron. He would not have gotten those without them. While that is true, you could also say that Shaq and LeBron would not have won those championships without Wade. And while Shaq did finish second in MVP voting in 2005, by 2006 he started to slow down and it was obvious that it became Wade's team. He was no longer the same dominant force he once was, and in the finals that year, he was only the third leading scorer on the team, even behind Antoine Walker. In 2011, when the Heat played the Mavs again and lost this time, let me show you some stats. Player A, 26 points per game, 10 rebounds, 2 assists, 0.7 steals, 0.7 blocks, 42% shooting, 54 true shooting percentage. Player B, 26.5 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 1.5 steals, 1.5 blocks, 55% shooting, 61 true shooting percentage. Player A was Dirk Nowitzki, the guy who many believe was the undisputed best player in that series. Player B was Dwayne Wade, who put up arguably even better stats. Of course, there's context behind it. Dirk was the lone superstar on the team and he had a bigger burden to carry. But at the same time, a lot of people forget how great Wade was in that series. They were both much better than LeBron, that's for sure. In the next few years though, it became LeBron's team. Wade's knee problems started to pile up and he started to slow down. But he was still the second option and played a crucial part in their two championships together. He's the best slasher ever and despite being a ball dominant player, he was still able to adapt and play off the ball when LeBron came to Miami. That's something he doesn't get enough credit for. 
This brings me to the third point that people use against Wade. His prime was kinda short, compared to other all-time greats, and when it comes to longevity, he doesn't do well in that category. On top of that, he had his best years from around 2008 to 2010 when the Heat were losing in the first round because their team was terrible outside of Wade. I mean, in Wade's best statistical season, 2008-9, the second leading scorer on the team was Michael Beasley, who was a rookie. That's another thing fans don't remember. When most people think about Wade, they only think about the 2006 Finals and then the LeBron era starting in 2011. They forget everything in between where Wade had the best individual seasons of his career. So it's not like his prime was short, it's just forgotten and overlooked because his team sucked. Plus, the injuries didn't help either. Wade actually got his meniscus removed from his left knee before he got drafted, which he deeply regrets. That's the main reason why he's had all these knee problems now. The fourth and final point I want to address is the most reasonable. A ton of people, including fans, reporters, and analysts, they dislike Wade because he's done some dirty things throughout his career. Some of it looked pretty bad, and I understand why people hate him for that. Additionally, he doesn't seem like the best teammate or locker room guy. Back in Chicago, him and Jimmy Butler called out the young guys publicly, even though Wade wasn't very good that season either. Regardless, there's no questioning Wade's greatness. He's not the best player to ever put on a Miami Heat jersey, but he is the greatest Heat player in franchise history. And that's all, folks. I've seen and heard Dwayne Wade get disrespected a lot, whether it's in the media or by the fans or whatever. I feel like a lot of their criticisms are unjustified, and that's why I wanted to make this video. I loved watching him in his prime. He was just amazing. Anyway, what are your thoughts on Dwayne Wade? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.